Greetings and salutations loyal viewers of this channel, my name is Sean and this video should be published one day before election day, Tuesday, November 5th, 2024, where you guys out there in my audience will be casting your votes to make the ultimate choice on whether or not Prop 47 in the state of California will be repealed, which requires a yes vote on Prop 36. Now, of course, I'm kidding, guys. While that is true, and you probably should vote yes on Prop 36 if you live in the state of California, obviously, we are going to be talking about the presidential election. The evil orange man versus Kamala Harris, the man who worked at McDonald's and took a second job as a sanitation worker versus the woman who never worked at McDonald's and stole the nomination from Joseph R. Biden. And I'm here to tell you guys for the world to see one day before the election that it is possible for Kamala Harris to win this election. She is not that far behind in the polls. Some of the newer polling actually shows her up a little bit. And no, we're not talking about that crazy one out of the state of Iowa. But the fact of the matter is, people who want the evil orange man to win need to not get too overconfident, and they actually have to go out and vote. So I'm going to explain to you what's going down. But before I do, I want to thank everybody who supports this channel via actualjusticewarrior.com slash join. Oh, give me the money. Give you give me the money. OK, now look, I got to be perfectly honest with you guys right off the top, because I am not somebody who's big on voting. I'm not going to do that thing where I say go to vote.org and make sure you make your voice heard, because ultimately you decide everything because this isn't the Philip DeFranco show. I'm also not going to subtly encourage you to vote for Kamala Harris, which is also what Philip DeFranco is doing while going out of my way to try to suppress your votes for the evil orange man. Again, I did vote this election cycle, and there's a very good reason for that, and that's because when Kamala Harris came to do SNL, it seems like, and this is just my opinion, just my speculation, she ordered Governor Kathy Hochul to execute Peanut the Squirrel and Fred the Raccoon, and that kind of authoritarianism is something that I could not stand for. No, obviously, I'm just kidding about that, except for the fact that I did vote early in this particular election, even though it was incredibly difficult for me to find parking and they gave me a pen that didn't work at first and this is akin to voter suppression not to mention the fact that i was supposed to have six ballot initiatives on my ballot and for whatever reason the one that they printed up and handed to me only had three of those ballot initiatives but you know what that is not the point of the story i live in new york my state is pretty much a solid blue state if you guys are in the swing states if you guys are in the states that matter you need to get your butts out to the voting booths and do the voting thing in order to make sure you get the outcome that you actually want because in the previous couple of elections we're talking about three states and under a hundred thousand votes deciding who the president of the United States of America is. I can imagine what can be and be unburdened by what has been, you know? What can be unburdened by what has been? 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 What we can see, what we believe can be unburdened by what has been. What can be unburdened by what has been? What can be unburdened by what has been what can be unburdened by what has been what can be unburdened by what has been who we can be unburdened by who we have been what can be unburdened by what has been where we can be unburdened by where we have been and unburdened by where we are right now what can be unburdened by what has been what can be unburdened by what has been what can be unburdened by what has been and make no mistake about it even though the Kamala campaign is incredibly cringe and stupid and has a bunch of ridiculous celebrity endorsements and all this other fake phony baloney nonsense it is entirely possible that she can win and there is one key issue that I believe is crucial for you guys to pay attention to and that is of course the issue of abortion or reproductive rights or whatever you guys want to call it because the fact of the matter is 
that issue is motivating women to go out and vote and vote in record numbers. And you can see that not just on the presidential level in the presidential polls of who was actually voting for Kamala Harris, but in the state ballot initiatives on this issue, which Republicans have been losing every time it's put up. So while it is interesting to look at the early vote data, which seems to be extraordinarily positive for the Republicans, while it is fascinating to see them push yet another ridiculous hoax, this time they're claiming that the evil orange man called for the execution of Liz Cheney when he actually said something that left-wing anti-war people have been saying over and over again, which is all these politicians in D.C. are super comfortable sending your kids off to die, but they would never go on the front lines themselves, and Liz Cheney should do that before she votes for your kids to go to war. What do you make of the statement i woke up today to the uh, headline that uh, trump had called for a firing squad for liz cheney and this is what i really don't like about the media no he didn't he did you not. don't you don't have to move me to not like donald trump he says more so than many I shitty already. things why it, do you have and to and by do the that? way yeah. what if you Pete don't realize it well, here's what he said. he's he's criticizing her for being a war hawk yeah. i mean she is dick cheney's daughter <laughs> yeah, he said she's a radical war hawk let's put her with a rifle standing there with nine barrels shooting at her okay let's see how she feels about it you know they're all war hawks when they're sitting in Washington in a nice building saying, oh, gee, we'll send tens of thousands of troops right into the mouth of the enemy. Now, of course, he expresses himself horribly. He has to add, she's a stupid person. Yeah. This is exactly what Peace Dicks always said. This is Fortunate Son, the song. It's like, you know what? It's very easy to sit in your building and send young men to die, mm -hmm. apropos of Ukraine, yes. because, I don't know, that war does not look like it's going in the right direction. Not at all. But no. just so, you know, just, yeah. just don't lie to me. I don't like Donald Trump. Don't lie to me and tell me she was in, he wants in front of us, a firing court. He was saying something that, by the way, if it came out of the mouth, some of it, not the stupid part, again, sounds like what hippies used to say. But the fact of the matter is, we have expected them to do dirty tricks this whole entire time. We have expected all the stops to be pulled out by the mainstream media, by the Harris campaign, by all their different various co-conspirators, and the fact that we're even talking about Donald Trump versus Kamala Harris already tells you guys that they have no bounds of reason, no limitations on what they will do in order to get the outcome that they want. Again, they forced Joe Biden off the ticket against his will. The guy was saying that he was still in the race and he was going to come back and all this stuff just prior to them forcibly removing him from the ballot and installed the candidate that got zero votes in the Democratic primary. They've already chucked 14 million votes to get their girl in this position. Let me close with this. I know I'm not a young man. State the obvious. Well, I know. Well. well. I don't walk as easy as I used to. I don't speak as smoothly as I used to. I don't deba debate as well as I used to. But I know what I do know. I know how to tell the truth. I know, I know, I know right from wrong. <laughs> and I know how to do this job. I know how to get things done. And I know like millions of Americans know, when you get knocked down, you get back up. So if you think that they're beyond lying about what Trump said in a news story or that Liz Cheney lie would be the last of it, you're desperately mistaken. The fact is they're going to push hoax after hoax, piece of misinformation after piece of information. And the reason they're going to do so, and Joe Biden, to his credit, actually revealed this to the public, is because they don't think that you have any value. Biden said it 100% clearly, you are garbage if you're a Trump supporter. They're good, decent, honorable people. The only garbage I see floating out there is his supporters. And make no mistake about it, they 100% believe that you are human garbage if you don't vote the way that they want. And one of the dirty little secrets is that in addition to that, belief being held, by the way, by the wider Democratic Party, by the media elites, and all these different various people, they also believe that about their own voters. The overwhelming majority of them, these people that think they're in the club when they're really not, 
they're also worthless to these people as well. You think Kamala Harris cares about everyday people? There's a reason why she sounds so unauthentic when she talks about how she's in a middle class family and people really cared about their grass when she was uh, growing up because you stupid plebs, you stupid middle class pieces of garbage, you care about your lawns right now. Oh, groceries? You're concerned about that? Let's talk about your grass. I grew up a middle class kid. My mother raised my sister and me. She worked very hard. Um, she was able to finally save up enough money to buy our first house when I was a teenager. Um, I grew up in a community of hardworking people, you know, construction workers and nurses and teachers. And I try to explain to some people who may not have had the same experience, you know, if, if but a lot of people will relate to this. You know, I grew up in a neighborhood of folks who were very proud of their lawn. Now, again, I understand Kamala Harris, terrible candidate, absolute cringe from top to bottom for her whole career. But the fact of the matter is a lot of people will tell you behind the scenes that the establishment will never let Donald Trump be president of the United States again. He crept on them before in 2016. They thought they got rid of him completely in 2020. But the fact is, even if he's up in the polls, you better treat him like he's significantly down in the polls because they do not want this man in office office. He is not in their club. They're not interested in him. Once he flipped from a Democrat to Republican, they were done with him. And that is just the way that it's going to be. Kamala is their girl. She's going to do everything that they want. She knows who put her in power. She's going to bend the knee to those who put her in power. Because again, unlike other people who run for president, she doesn't even have the support from her own party from a primary process in order to claim any form of legitimacy. She's an absolute puppet of the Obama and Clinton establishment, and we can see that by the people that she surrounds herself with. Our basic freedoms are being tested. Madam VP, I know you've been traveling across the country. What are you hearing? Yeah, girl, I'm out here in these streets. And let me tell you, you're right, Taraji. There is so much at stake in this moment. The majority of us believe in freedom and equality. But these extremists, as they say, they not like us. No, they not. And they've also made their plans quite clear. John Fetterman showed up on the Joe Rogan podcast. Joe Rogan asked him if their plan with that border bill was to give amnesty to illegal aliens that happened to be in swing states and if this was going to benefit the Democratic Party. And even though Fetterman was denying that it was this plot at first, he said, yeah, I totally understand why people think that we're doing that. Because guess what? They're doing that. Down because uh, Trump, um, he he declared that, that that's that's a bad deal after it was negotiated with, with the other side. But what didn't that deal also involve amnesty? And didn't that deal also involve a significant did, number yeah. of illegal yeah. aliens being allowed into the country every year? I think it was two million people. Uh, well, so yeah. it was still the same sort of situation. And their fear is exactly what I talked about, that these people will be moved to swing states and that that will be used to essentially rig those states and turn them blue forever. Uh, well, I, I, I'm not. I'm not really sure if that's that's uh, what, 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 what's what's in play. I, I think it's really like it's important that we have to have an, an honest conversation. But doesn't about that seem logical, though? If you have a significant number of people that are being moved into swing states that have come across the border illegally, and then you provided them with all these services, you provided them with food stamps, EBT, you provided them with housing. You could, if you gave those people amnesty and allow those people to vote, and it was very organized. You're talking about 75,000 votes over a few counties that switched everything over to the Republicans. You could see how you import 10 million people over the course of four years illegally and then move a significant number of them to swing states and then provide them with all these services and then give them a path to citizenship. You could uh, essentially uh, rig those states. Uh, undeniably, immigration is changing our nation. I mean, I haven't spent a lot of time in Texas, but it's very clear that that immigration has has remade Texas. And I think it's it generally it's it's for for a good. So let me make this 100 percent clear for everybody out there in the audience, especially those of you who are in the back. If Kamala Harris wins, when she was put in charge of the border, when she denied that immigration was a crisis in this country for three and a half years, when she pretended like there was no issue and she didn't even have to be bothered with the question of whether or not she should visit the border, then they will not fix it. They will not pass any compromise or anything like that. They will allow more and more people to flood to the border. They will allow more and more people to surge to the border because they know that no matter what, as 
as bad as that issue gets, they will not lose electorally because that is the message that the voters would send to Kamala Harris in that particular situation. And as bad as you might think immigration is, number one and number two issue for a lot of voters is economy and immigration. The fact is it will get significantly worse if you reward this party for being derelict in their duty and enforcing the border. And if they actually get their compromise, if they actually get citizenship in the hands of enough of these people, then they won't have to worry about you because they'll have a whole bunch of new voters get that new burgeoning democratic majority that they've been writing about since at least 2004 in the voting booths, and then you'll never win another election again. In addition to that, there is a very high likelihood that two different Supreme Court justices, that would be Clarence Thomas and Samuel Alito, will step down or pass away during the next term of the next president. So those justices will be replaced by Kamala Harris, who is already saying that she wants to get rid of the filibuster in order to force her agenda through on the American people. And once that happens, guess what? Your Second Amendment is gone. The liberal justice's position on the court is that you don't have an individual right to keep and bear arms. That is how they will vote, and we know that because that's how they voted in all the historic gun cases that we've seen in the last decade. And you might think, who would vote for this? How could they possibly have any chance of winning? But let me be 100% clear. We don't know how people are going to vote specifically on the abortion issue. And the fact of the matter is, no matter what those people who are pro-life out there in my audience want to be true, it is a losing issue for the Republican Party. And Trump never really articulated a good position on it. The real answer is that constitutionally, this is a state's rights issue. The repeal of Roe versus Wade kicked it back to the states and they will be able to make their decision. And even in the conservative states, by the way, where they end up putting in all these different various abortion restrictions, the voters through ballot initiatives end up voting them away. But since Trump is not very good at articulating this position and we have 10 million more women that vote in our elections than men, according to Ashley St. Clair, who is posting that on my Twitter feed over and over and over again. The fact is, we could end up in a situation where Democrats gain ground, despite the fact that all these different election indicators show us that they should lose ground, which is what happened in 2022. So every single swing state, again, no matter how much they're trending towards Trump, no matter how narrow the path is for Kamala Harris actually is, could end up tilting in favor of the Democrats because women could turn out to vote specifically on that issue. They could rank it as their number one issue. And guess what? There are more women voting and they have a big advantage for Kamala Harris than they are men voting, despite the fact that men have a bigger advantage for Donald Trump as compared to women's for Kamala. So you could be looking at the cringiest Wakanda forever saying, The environment is vital. Killmonger may have ruined and burned your field of heart-shaped herbs, but don't worry. I'm from California. I can repopulate that field with a bunch of different herbs. To the lovely people of Wakanda, I know you will make the right choice. And as always, Wakanda forever. Paid for by Kamala Harris. Kamala Harris as your next president and make no mistake about it even though Kamala right now is doing the whole I'm post-racial I don't talk about race I don't call everyone evil white racist as soon as she goes back into office that's exactly what she's going to do and Tim Walls her right hand man her man who doesn't believe in the first amendment he's going to be pushing on all those issues as well look I'm going to keep it 100% real with you guys I'm not under the illusion whether it be the Democratic or Republican illusion that the second Trump term is going to be substantially different from the first Trump term. The facts are past behavior is a good predictor of future outcome, and he's likely going to do the same policies or similar policies that he put into place before. If you like those policies, you should vote for the evil orange man. If you like the Biden policies, if you like the woke stuff that Harris was proposing during her 2020 campaign, you should vote for her. But make no mistake about it, this is a winnable election for either side, and you shouldn't be surprised if Kamala Harris all of a sudden is the winner in a bunch of these swing states that many of people have made a ton of money telling you are trending in the other direction. Because if the low propensity Trump voter doesn't show up to vote, 
game over for him. That's it. All this polling advantage, the uncharted territory of him being up in the polls for the first time in a presidential election going into the election ever, it's all going to be moot. And there's also the possibility that the reason why he's up in all these swing state polls is because they missed him back in 2016 and back in 2020. And now the pollsters are overcompensating for what they didn't poll well the last time. So again, it's up to you guys Tomorrow is election day. Early voting is likely done in many places. If you have it open, you should definitely go there or whatever. But the fact is, Tuesday, November 5th, that will be when the decision is made. So good luck to you guys out there. I am Sean Fitzgerald. This has been my election forecast thingamabob. I'm not going to make a map or anything laying like that. But yeah, it's, 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 it's anybody's game. You, you guys make your decision. Whatever. Do, 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 your, do your thing. Anyway, that's all I really have for you guys today. Thank you so much for watching. If you like this video, show my leaving a like. Subscribe for more content. Follow me on my social medias. Support me via the support links in the description of this video. This has been me talking about Election Day. Till next time.